just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run. Afraid of love, I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. For my misery, always blaming someone else. I'm really into judgment and delay, but only. Thank you so much. And I just want to thank Soren and Frank for the music. Um, the little intro is absolutely beautiful. I'm so excited about it. Oh, because we're all little runaways. <laughs> we forgot. We forgot where home was. And uh, that's what A Course in Miracles is all about, how to get back. And um, so put on your ruby slippers. We're going to take a little journey for a half an hour and figure this one out. Um, and before I forget, it was St. Patrick's Day yesterday, and I just, I, I need to mention it because I was raised in a first generation Irish Catholic family, and it was a high holiday, kind of like Christmas. And I just also need to say, St. Patrick wasn't Irish. He was actually sold by slavers to the Irish, <laughs> and he had many forgiveness opportunities in that, I'm sure. So on some level, um, I'm thankful for him and leading the way in this whole um, adventure called forgiveness. And uh, that kind of brings me to the, uh, <clears throat> there was a question that came in uh, this week, and it was, it was a beautiful question, and I feel like it, it is, totally noteworthy of, of really taking a little journey with, and that is, what does it mean to accept the atonement? Um, and this is kind of the crux of A Course in Miracles. Um, I remember in book studies, we would talk about at one -ment. And um, it always landed funny with me because it sounded like, oh yes, just go into a peaceful state, be at one, smile. And then I'd go on to yell at the banker or, you know, scream at someone on the phone or, you know, and, and lose any sense of peace that that word might have brought me. So um, today I kind of want to explore this as a verb, not as a noun. Um, to accept the atonement is actually an action. It's not a doing action. It's actually something that happens in the mind. and. Um, for me, um, I've been a meditator my whole life, and I, I used to go to sanghas and Buddhist temples and do group meditations just because I really enjoyed meditating with others, with a group of others. The problem was, and this was before really grappling with A Course in Miracles, the problem was um, I couldn't quiet my mind. And this came up recently at, down at La Casa. There was someone that was saying um, that they had a hard time meditating because they couldn't quiet their mind. And there was a sense of fear of even getting that quiet. And I remember when I first started meditating, thoughts would run through my mind. And I couldn't, they just loop around. And I stop thinking of that. Stop thinking of that. You're meditating. Stop thinking of that. So it was a really hard process to get quiet. And um, then, of course, in miracles came in, and it sort of shifted the way I meditate. Um, for me now, if a thought loops around, that's just a forgiveness opportunity. That's something on which I need to accept the atonement on. And it shifts the whole practice of meditation because now I get a much clearer idea of what I need to accept the atonement on. Because it really is whatever is hooking in my mind is something I need to forgive. And, um, you know, I have an example of this because I remember this so clearly. The first time I grabbed a thought that wasn't helpful. <laughs> And not that they weren't going through my mind all the time, but it was the first time I clearly saw it. Saw it, And it was so mundane. 
it, you could have let it slip by without even noticing it, but I didn't. And I thought, oh my God, this is what's upsetting my peace. And it was, uh, there was a group of people and I remember a thought going through going, huh, that woman shouldn't wear that color green. And I thought, who the hell cares? <laughs> I mean, where in the heck is that landing? Why is that thought even taking up space in my head? And really, if you look at this from A Course in Miracles, these are the thoughts that I'm projecting out. And there were many, many, for, and there still are, many forgiveness opportunities on the body called Calico because she was never okay. And that's a, that's a topic for another show completely on body shaming. But it was like me projecting this, this woman shouldn't wear that color green was actually my projection of me not being okay. I'm not okay. And it has nothing to do with the color green. It has with me making someone else a correction for someone else out there. And that's an atonement opportunity. There is the beginnings of accepting the atonement. Now that's not the end. Just recognizing it is not completing accepting the atonement. And I just want to say, um, just because I've been repeating this all week, and um, it's kind of the nature of this program, so I'm going to say it here. And this is in the text, chapter two. The sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. So the sole responsibility for the miracle worker is to accept the, accept the atonement for himself. And this is, so seeing my projection out there of green, not good, she shouldn't wear that, was me projecting something that I was not okay with in myself that this form needs to alter in many ways. It had nothing to do with color. It was size, shape, age, looks. I mean, everything about it wasn't okay. That's what I got growing up. And so I, I lived projecting this out on others to the point where I became a doctor. So I could, you would pay me money and I would tell you how to, do, how to correct your life. I mean, it's a six, it's a, the whole thing is an insane system, but that's how I kind of managed my projections. And so the sole responsibility of the miracle art worker is to accept the atonement for himself. So this is where the action takes place. And this is where for my process, Spiri and the instrument for peace were critical. Just, I couldn't have done it without them. Um, well, I probably could have done it without them, but it was so much easier with them. So I was able to take things like, okay, I don't like that color green on that woman. What's really going on there? What's the feeling there? I want to change something. Something is not okay. And I would take that through this whole process of the instrument for peace, which then became the Spiri bot. And it would really take those feelings of what's really going on and shift them around so that you could see them, what's really happening, that it's just your projection of not seeing yourself as okay. And each little thought, and none of them are too small to take to Spiri, is, is my personal opinion. Because each little thought unwraps these beliefs that we hold on to about who we are in this so-called world. And each time I would unwrap it, I would feel more and more peace, more and more joy. And it really, and, and I also need to say symptoms. If you have a headache, you have stomach ache, you're, you got the flu, take those to spirit because those are just projections as well. So this, this whole thing of accepting the atonement is a huge undertaking. And I, I applaud anyone that really is taking on the process of A Course in Miracles and doing more than book study with it. Because this is where you can completely unwrap the mind. Because we were taught how to think. 
which, you know, that's like, you know, growing up in a world where the earth is flat and you better not forget it because it's critical that you remember the earth is flat because you walk too far, you know what's going to happen. Well, I had the same thing, you know, it's like, you're not okay. And if you would only lose five pounds and, you know, people would like you better or whatever your version of that is, because we all have our own versions. We were all taught some version of the earth is flat. And the Course in Miracles and through Jesus, it's actually Jesus is trying to tell us, you can unwind this. You don't have to live like this anymore. Isn't that a movie? <laughs> you don't have to think like this anymore. Solaris, that's it. It's a great movie, but that's not why we're here. Anyway, the atonement really allows for this process to unwind. And so, you know, David, you know, his book, Unwind Your Mind, it's a great title because that's the process. It's taking each little, and they don't even need to necessarily look like grievances. I mean, ooh, that color green on her doesn't really work. How many times have I thought that? I, you know, it's like someone walks into my office, go, oh, they've got a limp. It must be that right hip. You know, I mean, this is the way my mind has been. And I, I have a gift that I can see my thoughts. And that's, I mean, <laughs> I now see it as a gift. Before it was, you know, they, they have a diagnosis now, ADHD. Well, you know, I was, I was, it was always, shh. I thought my name, David said once, he thought his name was don't. I think, I thought my name was shh. <laughs> I mean, I remember in fourth grade, oh, a little parable, I don't know why I'm sharing it, but I am. In fourth grade, my teacher, you know, there was a lot of conversations. You know, she talks all the time. And so they would move me from one desk to the other. You know, like, that's going to change anything. In my world, I just thought, oh, great, new people to talk to. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, my mind is very active, very active. And there's lots of useless information running through it. Meditating was the first step in quieting the mind to the point where I could slow those thoughts down. I still talk a lot. That's never going to change. But I can go into meditation now and slow those thoughts down so I can see them and identify, oh, grab it. Oh, this one needs to go to spirit. You know, this is not a helpful thought. And it's like, it's totally doable for all of us to go through this process. And I guarantee, and this one, you can take it to the bank. And my Irish grandmother used to say, you can take this to the bank. You know, not that I trusted banks at all, but you can, I get it. This one you can take to the bank. Each time you take on one of these negative thought patterns that you see wrapping through your mind and you clear it, Truly clear it, not just go, oh, there's a thought. Well, I'll just write that down here and leave it. Because it'll loop back in. And I, I knew I was looping. I'd have these consistent grievances come through. Um, you know, I, I had a foreclosure with Chase Bank. Speaking of banks, I had a, a, you know, they actually, it was a clerical error on their part, and they took my property. And I was fighting them. Oh, man, I was, you know, Irish angry. And that was pretty damn angry. And I was making them wrong a lot. And then I started thinking, you know, my sole responsibility as a miracle worker is to accept the atonement myself. And somehow I started, this started shifting. The whole image started shimmering. And quite frankly, a lot of my book study friends got angry at me for, for giving up on the fight, the good fight. But quite frankly, it was ruining my peace of mind. It was not making me happy. I was not happy. And so I really took on Chase Manhattan as one of my first forgiveness opportunities in this literal, you are this, your sole responsibility as a miracle worker is to accept the atonement. Forgive them. Because they're not real. They're just really making you miserable. And it's a thought in your head. So it was, that was a huge process, and it was one thought at a time. And I remember driving to work. I had like a 40-minute commute to work, and 
I would put Eckhart Tolle on at the time I was listening to The Power of Now and some other things, and, and I would see these thoughts come through. No, no, it was a freaking chase, freaking chase. <laughs> I was so angry, and it's like, okay, there's a thought. You know, how, how can I make this work a little bit differently? And, and the instrument of peace was really the first, the first tool. It's a paper tool. It's not uh, the, the computer bot that Spiri is, but it was the precursor of, of Spiri. And I would write, you know, I'd get to work, and the first thing I'd do, when I had my coffee before I saw anybody, it's like, okay, let's, let's get this out. And um, over time, with each, each thought, it became easier and easier and easier. And I just, I can't, I can't share enough that, yes, the sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for ourselves. And believe me, you know it's working when you go, oh no, that can't be true. They are so wrong. This, this, I, I'm not taking, I'm not taking responsibility for this. You can guarantee there's a miracle in there for you. But it doesn't land like it initially. And that's where joining with mighty companions really is the ticket. And I offer you, you know, the 30 day, um, David, and Living Miracles has a 30-day program on Facebook. It's free. It's offered like every month, month and a half. I moderate the Facebook group, and it's like people are going deep with this program. People are taking on, <laughs> very, you know, I, people are taking on their worst nightmares, and they're, they're owning them. And I just, I offer this to all of you because it's a way that you can join with your mighty companions in the unwind. Because you cannot do this yourself. He, you know, Jesus did. <laughs> but he, he did this whole death resurrection thing to show us we're not alone. And, and he came up with these disciples. And yeah, they, you know, some of them took it a wrong turn here and there. But now we have this thing called the Course in Miracles that is really showing us how to do this. And if you don't have access to somebody in your life that can hold the space for you when you're going through it and not agree with you and not make you wrong, but join you in the atonement, which is a real different process. And that's why I love living in community, quite frankly, because we're all kind of joined in this same thing. There's no make wrong. <laughs> There's no you're wrong. I'm right. None of that. It's like, you just forgot. You're a holy, innocent child of God, and your thoughts are taking you somewhere else. And so that's why I offer you the 30 days. There's Spiri. There's the Instrument for Peace. Oh, there's so many things. And if you go to livingmiracles.org, you can find a whole host of resources. Many do not cost a thing. And you can, you can sign on and join them. I know we have... Jeff doing movies every week, um, so there's an entertaining way to handle this. Just really find your path and join in this process of the sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for themselves. And that's what we're doing here. That's all we're doing here. There's nothing else. It's, you know, people say, well, wow, what happens in community? Like, woo, 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 woo. It's like, man, we're just working our butts off, <laughs> accepting the atonement and seeing where we want to make someone wrong and, and shifting that and looking at ourselves. It's like, what belief is this reflecting that I need to undo? And, and all these tools, and David is such a gift in that he kind of really took the Course, a course in Miracles literally and kind of developed from in all the living miracles that have, have worked on these programs for a while, have developed them from the ground up so that they're available. Spreakers and YouTubes, I just can't say enough about Spreakers and YouTubes. And I may not have a chance to go into the real nitty, because the, the superficial forgiveness opportunities are really obvious. Like, Needing to forgive Chase, that was pretty obvious. But then it gets into this subtler area. And ego is sneaky. I say there's a back door, you know, and ego is just coming in the doggy door going, gotcha. 
And it's like, you really need to watch out for these sneaky areas. And he just had a spreaker come out. Let me get the name of it so that you can go. It's a 23 minute spreaker and it's fabulous. Um, I've got it. Oh, a lesson in freeing the mind by transcending magic thoughts. A lesson in freeing the mind by transcending magic thoughts. Now, I thought magic thoughts, and they are. Magic thoughts are that which I use from the illusion to shift something in form. Okay, that's the way I held magic. But David takes it to a whole new level. If there's something that's being projected that you want to shift, like me wanting to make Chase Manhattan wrong and just have him get off my back and leave me alone and give me my home back, this is where transcending magic thoughts really comes to play in a very subtle way because it's not on right wrong. But I just heard something. <laughs> um, it's not about, it, it, magic thoughts are when you see someone like wearing the color green, ooh, they shouldn't wear that color green. That's a magic thought. I'm trying to shift form. But I'm trying to make it so their life works better by shifting their form. Oh my God, this is sick. I mean, this, the insanity of how deep this goes. And you can loop over and over and over and make yourself just freaking nuts. <laughs> and I highly recommend listening to that speaker. And I had to listen to it this past week about five times because there was something I was looping on, which I won't go into right now. But I was looping and I kept thinking, man, if this person would just get this piece, it would make their life so much easier. And then I could, I could relax. <laughs> and it's like, no, this is all for you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like just take it gently okay and that's and that's a pretty high level of of you know working with a course in miracles so initially just take the obvious ones the ones that make you angry you know if you're annoyed at your boss or your lover or your child or your dog you know take those to spirit you know see those differently and, and play with the whole process of accepting the atonement. But it definitely is a verb. It's not a om, I'm at one with everything, om. You know, that lasts for as long as you're thinking, I'm at one with everything. And then as soon as the phone bill comes in and they've done something wrong, you got a call and you're on an 800 number and you want to rip someone's heart out, <laughs> that's when the atonement really comes into play. <laughs> so... The sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. This is the foundation of A Course in Miracles. This is where everything starts and stops. And uh, David has many speakers. I mean, this last one I just love because it took me to a whole new level. But he has many speakers that, and YouTubes. And they're all free. And you can just listen to them and just put them on a loop. Listen to them. And if you don't, and here's a hint from someone that really knows, I, I love tips. This is a good tip. If when David is sharing something, you don't understand, you don't understand, it sounds like this. If it sounds like that, we need to loop it. Okay. Keep playing it. There's something there for you to get. And it needs, to, it needs to go deep. And you have some resistance up in your face that's preventing you from hearing it. That's all. So play it over and over and over. And I've done this so many times with David's stuff. I can't even tell you. Um, and this last speaker was a huge chunk for me because we're just all clearing this together. If we're here in the illusion, we believe in bodies or else we wouldn't be here. And I just, you know, it's like, just take heart. You're not alone. And there's a lot of us joining together in this process at this point. You can find, you can find help. You can find mighty companions to do this with. You don't have to do this on your own. So um, let me just, I have a little Rooney quote. I love Rooney. Um, he quiets my mind, which is not an easy thing to do. Um, and this is, this is about, Rumi's take on accepting the atonement. 
The fault is in the blamer. Spirit sees nothing to criticize. Yeah, so, you know, the next time you may find yourself having a thought run by your head going, hmm, not a good color on them. You know, just remember, the fault is in the blamer. The spirit sees nothing to criticize. Yeah. So we're getting close to the end of the show. And I just want to say, stay tuned to LM Virtual today because we have a whole series of programs, good, good juicy programs for you to um, join together. We have a whole Sunday worth of enlightening material to, to kind of shine some light on the awakening process. And, uh, you know, Living Miracles is a, an incredible um, opportunity to, to join. And Sundays, we're kind of giving you our day. So um, I do want to end with a quote that I started with in the last program. And, uh, and I'm not always going to be the only one on these programs. I just need to say it's just the guidance was go for the groundwork, which is the sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. And then this is one of my favorite pieces and where the beyond the body kind of came from. It's, it's one of the obstacles to peace in A Course in Miracles. Yet would I offer you my body, you whom I love, knowing its littleness. Or would I teach that bodies cannot keep us apart? Mine was of no greater value than yours, no better means for communication of salvation, but not its source. No one can die for anyone, and death does not atone for sin. But you can live to show it is not real. The body does appear to be the symbol of sin while you believe that it can get you what you want, while you believe that it can give you pleasure you will also believe that it can bring you pain. To think you could be satisfied and happy with so little is to hurt yourself, and to limit the happiness that you would have calls upon pain to fill your meager store and make your life complete. This is completion as the ego sees it, for guilt creeps in where happiness has been removed and substitutes for it. Communion is another kind of completion, which goes beyond guilt because it goes beyond the body. It was just a tiny mad idea at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. We built an altar made of hell.